Hello everyone, Dovetail has finally released the Baker Lou line trailer. I'm going to be talking about what I do and don't like about the Baker Lou line as they have also given us a, let's open the doors real quick, we're going to be playing East Coastway in the background. Um, they have also given us a Q&A on the route. So I'm going to be going through all the stuff they have said in the Q&A. And uh, the stuff that I don't like, the stuff that I think they can improve on with this. So, I'll be leaving a link to the Q&A and to the trailer of the Baker Lou line in the description down below. So you can check that out. And let's get started. I'm going to start talking about it once we get on the tracks. We're going to be start talking about it once we get on the rails. Alright, let's lock the doors. Okay. So, they have released the trailer today. And what was seen in the trailer was a couple of shots of the Baker Lou line, uh, 1972 stock. Um, one of the things I noticed is that they said in the trailer, um, unique services, something along those lines. Um, if I can open the trailer here soon. Um, I believe it says something along the lines of unique services, and I'm trying to figure out what do they mean by unique services, because um, for all I know right now, the Baker Lou line does not have, um, not the Baker Lou line, Train Sim does not have very um, unique things, unique services or anything, because um, it's, it's mainly just you, you complex services here's what it says so what i'm thinking complex services means is not dynamic events along the track but more so um you're sticking to a strict timetable um of when the train is supposed to arrive at these certain stations so uh what we could also see in the trailer is countdown clocks now countdown clocks is the timers you see when you're at the station telling you when the next train is going to arrive now in the Q&A they explained to us that the timers will not be based on where the train is it's going to be based on where when the train is supposed to stop there so if you're holding the train up along the tracks and every train is getting held up for let's say two minutes that timer will not say that the train is let's say the train is really five minutes away but the the countdown clock will probably say it's two minutes away so it's based on the schedule not the actual position of the train so, another thing is they announced that the preserved collection will not include Northeastern Corridor. Now, in my opinion, it is the worst DLC slash route in the game because there just wasn't enough in it. Um, although it's a letdown for me because I did like the X Metro Liner cab. Um, so I would have liked to see that come over into TSW2. But I can understand they said that there's um, the way to design Northeastern Corridor is different to any other route, so it was not able to um, get brung over onto the next game because of the way they created that and how it's different to the way they create their routes now. So that's one letdown. Another thing they talked about is the signaling in the London Underground. Now, the signaling, they announced that we will not have draw up signals so draw up signals is basically uh if you know what a timer is in new york city then you should know what a draw up signal is it's basically a timer but if you do not know what it is it's basically a signal that will not change to green unless you are under a um posted speed limit so let's say this signal coming up right now Let's say that's a draw up signal. And under it, it'll say 15 miles, right? 15 miles per hour. I would have to be going 15 miles per hour or under that in order for the timer to change the signal to green. 
Now, the Baker Lou line runs those along with block signaling. Um, they will not be including draw up signals because they can't animate the, the way the trip arm comes up and trips the train because as all of you should know, when you bypass a red signal in Transom World, the scenario or the service automatically fails. So it, it will conflict with the way they already do things if they would have the trip arm um, stop the train and put on the emergency brakes. So that's another letdown. However, he said it's going to be as um, replicated as possible. And the way Matt said that, the senior producer, the way he said that makes me think that they have something that's similar to the draw up and timer signals. However, it's not completely replicated. So it'll be a little, little key differences, little differences. Um, so that's another thing. Another thing they showed was the cab. So the cab it reminds me of the C stop cab on the circle line. Uh, or the old, it's either the C or the D stop cabs. Um, they have the brake test. They have all those little levers and switches you can press in the game as well. However, uh, some of them will not work like they do in real life. They're just there for role playing. Uh, um, services role playing um, forgot the word that, was, that came into my mind um, just totally popped out of my mind role playing purposes there we go <laughs> um, anyways though another thing they showed is the interior of the train now passengers there is um more passengers than usual than we usually see on any regular trains and world routes however compared to real london underground it's nothing because um if you know london underground london underground is uh, notorious for its sardine packed trains um it's not fully replicated in tsw but i think that's because of the constraints of the unreal engine however they said that it's because of the constraints of their own rail engine and because if the train was fully packed you would not be able to walk in between the cars you would not be able to walk through the different cars of the train and you'll get stuck on the passenger so i do understand that now they also explain to us in the q a how they select routes um to be in train sim now, the way they select routes is basically if the if they see it a lot in the forums or if they already have it on their, on their um, roadmap. If it's an easy route to get information on, if it's a long route or not, and they explain to us why they cannot make such long routes like a full cross-country route on Amtrak or whatever. Now, do you understand that? However, certain routes don't have to only be 35 miles um, bump it up to 60 maybe 70 miles um, you don't have to make a whole um, 1,000 mile route but make it a longer route that we can experience more if you just have two stations going from one end to the other end it's just not going to be fun for most people because you're not doing much on that route that's why I think the Baker Lou line it's a good thing that they're adding into the game because there's a lot of diversity on that route. There's a lot of different things you can do. Now, they explained to us, they showed us how the countdown clocks work um, in the thing. And as I said before, it's based off the schedules. However, if you're on time, and most of the AI trains will be on time if you do not hold them up, they, they can look very nice looking at the countdown clocks um, excuse me one moment while I take a sip of this now the countdown clocks can look very nice and it can be helpful for when you're at a station you're waiting for the next train to take you to let's say Queens Park for your next service or whatever I think um, the countdown clocks can be helpful so you'll look at the countdown clock and be okay maybe trains coming in let's say two minutes so I won't have to wait too long and you'll know uh, okay trains coming in maybe five minutes let me go to the bathroom right now 
So you just have the general idea of when the train is coming, not the exact time. Another thing they showed us, they told us actually, is how many services are there in the game. Now, if you know anything about subway routes in general, is that they're usually frequent, <clears throat> very frequent. Maybe every eight to ten minutes with New York City subway and with London Underground, it's every like two to three minutes. Especially with the Baker Loo line, it's about three to four minutes. Now in the game, Matt, um, the senior producer, said that there are about 215, I believe, 215 services in the game and five scenarios. Now the scenarios are pretty disappointing, but we'll get to that later on in this video. The services, there are about 215, and in a later update, they'll be adding, they'll be bringing the total number of services up to 451. Um, so with the base amount of services that they already have, um, when the game comes out, it'll have about 10 minute um, times in between trains. Um, and when the next um, time time it comes out, it'll be about five minutes in between each train. I think that's a reasonable amount for a train simulator where you're able to walk around and all that. And uh, the Unreal Engine does have its constraints and all that. But they did explain to us why they can't just add all the services there are in real life because you have to make sure that services don't collide with each other given the times they are supposed to depart, let's say, Queens Park and go to Harrow and Weldstone, however you pronounce it. And uh, then they all go into the yard at a certain point. It's just not, they have to make sure no trains collide, there aren't issues. Another thing is, the scenarios are just not looking good, uh, to say the least. Usually scenarios in train sim will be like, uh, go to this station, maybe there's a mechanical problem with doors, or there's maybe uh, construction that you won't see on the tracks and you'll have to move slower through this area. With this new one, it will be a continuation of the training. So the training will teach you all the bells and whistles of the train. However, the scenarios will basically be uh, operate this train from Queens Park to a random station along the line. And it's basically a day in the life of a London Underground operator. So it's kind of disappointing. I was hoping for some dynamic, um, dynamic scenarios. Maybe there's construction on the tracks. You have to move slower or terminate at this station, run a shuttle service, something along those lines. But we get what we get. Um, another thing they showed is it, it um, they explained to us that we will not be able to use the outside camera of the train while we're in the tunnels and the reason for this is you'll be clipping through walls which um, I don't think that's a big problem but if it let's say if it prevents you from getting back to the train in a certain way I can see how that can be an issue um, they also said you will not be able to walk around on the tracks while you're underground. You will not be able to walk in the tunnels because the tunnels is about just a little larger than the actual train itself. Um, and very, very, and I quote, very, very bad things will happen if they allowed you to walk in the tunnels. Um, you, your imagination you can work through that. But um, I, I, I can also understand that. But yeah, the, the Baker Blue line is looking like a very, very good addition to train sim. A very welcome addition. And they was talking about how the Baker Blue line will set how they look forward to doing other London Underground lines. So I'm thinking the Baker Blue line will not be the only London Underground line we see. And they said they did say they want to expand out, but since they are in the UK, it's easier for them to get. Um, more information on the lines that are actually in the UK. London Underground, right there in London, they could talk to TFL, Transport for London, 
about getting some footage of the 1972 stop is much easier than let's say talking to the MTA which they don't like showing us the cabs of their trains and all that it'll be much easier than talking to them about let's say getting the pictures of uh, R62A so um, they did say that uh, most of the London Underground um, lines are automatically operated ATO by a computer that operates the train and um, I'm not sure if the circle line is like that but they wanted to do a route that you're in control of the train yourself and not switch it up to where you're in control of a train that usually runs automatically because you'll basically be, basically be doing something that operators normally wouldn't do in real life and they want to keep it as realistic as they can so I do understand that however it would have been nice to see the circle line in the game now three things that they still have not answered I'm not sure if they answered the first one However, I've been wondering this for a while since I play on console if we will be able to turn off the HUD on consoles because I just don't want to see all of this. If I know the route by, by mind and all that, I shouldn't have to have the HUD on the screen at all times. I should be able to look at the, the dials inside the cab to, okay, let's say I'm going 30 miles per hour and I know the next speed limit is a 15. I should be able to look at the actual speedometer in the cab instead of looking at the speedometer on the right. It just gives you more of a realism factor that real operators would have to go through. Right now, since they forced the HUD on the screen, I'm looking at the HUD to measure my speed. However, if the HUD wasn't on the screen, I would be looking at the speedometer in the middle, knowing, okay, the next speed limit is a 40 mile per hour speed limit. Let me get ready to start slowing down. They still have not answered that. Another thing I want to know is if the scenario planner will allow us to do back and forth routes. Like a full day in an operator's life. Let's say you go from one end of the line, you stop at every station, going to the other end. Then you switch back to the other side and go back and forth like that. That's what I'm talking about. And the final thing... The final thing is I want to know if, because Transom currently has a problem where if you're going to the yard, the depot, after you are done with a service, most passengers will still stay on the train. And that's just, that wouldn't happen in real life because they'll do manual checks to see, okay, there's passengers off the train, we'll get them off the train before we head into the yard for the day. And uh, it breaks realism because passengers will not be on the train. Maybe the one occasional passenger that they did not see slip onto the train. But you will not see a passenger on the train every single time you are going to the yard. So, I want to know if they have fixed that issue. However, they did explain to us who was speeding. I forgot the speed limit was 10 coming into here. They have explained to us that they are working on other stuff. They said uh, the AI is just not realistic, you know. When they're, at the, when they're on the platforms, they're just standing there lifeless. Now, most people, when they're standing on the platform, they're looking down at their phones. They're looking up at the sky. They're in their own state of mind. They're not just standing there T-posing, you know, forever, if you know what I mean. So they said they are working on getting new character models and having them perform different things while they're on the platform. Um, close the store like this here we go just standing there arms folded in real life most of these passengers if there actually was passengers at the station would be on their phones look just sitting there nothing doing nothing sitting there doing nothing you know uh, dynamic things they said they want to be adding into the game this guy has a nice view with the big window. That's one thing I don't understand. I don't understand how these first class seats work, if they check tickets or not. I'm not really sure.
Okay, let's lock the doors. Um, so yeah, that's basically that's most of the stuff they have explained to us. With it, they they um did say that since Northeastern Corridor is not coming over to TSW2, um, uh, they want to see what they could do for us Amtrak fans. Well, some Amtrak fans, um, uh, to see if they can add something for us to do with Amtrak in the game. Now they did say that they can possibly go back to revisit um, Northeastern Corridor and maybe and maybe add that into TSW at a later date. However, no word on that right now. I just like that they are not saying what they are going to do two years in advance right now because we're looking forward, we were still looking forward to the route editor. Never got it. So, you know. Um, and if I load up the, the Dovetail Games website to see what they have um, added onto it about uh, the Baker Lou line. Because they had the Q&A today along with the trailer drop which um, that's cool that's cool I was not expecting the trailer to drop today and I didn't even know they was doing a Q&A but uh, I tuned in to get the news on it now I'm gonna read what it says on the website it says send the cab and take control on one of the world's busiest underground railways discover the Baker Lou line and train some world too Head into the darkness of London Underground's London's busy underground commuter railway network. I honestly thought it was considered a subway or a metro, but okay. Power through overground and underground at the controls of the London Underground's iconic 1972 stock. Visit some of London's most famous stations and see the city from an all-new perspective. Opened between 1906 in 1915 originally known as the Baker Street uh, this is basically just um, some bios on it the Baker Lou line is 14.4 miles long and has 25 unique stations so they these are handcrafted stations they didn't just copy and paste from one station on they're handcrafted now it goes from Elephant and Castle in South London to Harrow and Weldstone in the northwest of the city. It covers many of London's iconic landmarks and famous streets like Waterloo, Piccadilly Circus, Baker Street, and more. There are 10 overground stations and 15 underground stations to discover, and the various timetable services and scenarios in TSW2 will take you on a tour of these as you explore the full line. Some sections of the Baker Lou line are described as deep level due to the overall depth below sea level, which will test your driving skills as you dive deeper underground, particularly as you travel from Oxford Circus to Piccadilly. The new adhesion feature will change how your train responds not only to the conditions of the rail, but also the grade how far how steep it is or um, yeah just how steep it is learning every nuance of the line will be critical to get your breaking point right for this precise commuter train in TSW2 we have carefully replicated each of the stations along the line in detail immerse yourself in the London Underground experience and discover what it's like to operate this challenging route. Now you'll have the pleasure of driving the iconic Mark II 1972 stock through the Baker Loon line, sporting the famous red, gray, and blue livery, synonymous with the London Underground. This train has been in service for nearly 50 years. And it's instantly recognizable down to the smallest details like the fabric on its seats. And then they give 
a couple of screenshots of the line. So that's an overview of the Bakerloo line and what we'll be expecting. I will definitely be um, uploading many videos of the Bakerloo line when it releases and I will continue to upload more videos of Transom World if TSW2 gets stale, which I doubt it will because I am planning on completing every single Bakerloo line service, which I think is a big task. Um, so that's all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button and um, can you please subscribe to the channel? That really helped me out. Um, I also have a gaming channel called Zeno Z E E N O Z on YouTube. Upload gaming videos very frequently on that channel. So go check it out if you're interested and go subscribe to that channel. I'll catch you guys in the next video whenever that may be. And I hope you guys are excited for the London Underground, the Baker Lou line in the game, and TSW2 as a whole. Uh, in the comment section, if you have any suggestions um, for any routes in the game, or anything I have said wrong, or anything you are just excited about with TSW2, uh, post that down in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.